Hey folks and welcome back to another Interview Hacker video. I'm Brendan from The Interview Hacker and in this video I'm going to show you how to interview hack. Right, so it's not difficult at all, it really isn't difficult, uh, but you've just got to follow the process. So a few of my clients are, are actually applying for the prison service and I know that for some of them they've got their assessment coming up. Now the prison service provides loads of guidance for you but not all the guidance you actually need. So they've got a great blog on the assessment and uh, recruitment centre, which tells you what's going to happen and gives you some tips. Uh, but what it doesn't give you is things like the success profiles from the government. Uh, these are used by the civil service and also used for the prison sector. And they describe the sort of behaviours that they are looking for in a good candidate. So these are actually used for developing people within the police prison service, but they've got to assess you against something. Now, rather confusingly, they've also got a competencies and qualities framework, which seems to run alongside this, but more about this in a moment. But look, this is my world. This, I geek out on this kind of stuff, so I'll get it to make sense for you. So one of the um, exercises that you're going to do is a role play. Now you've got, whether you're doing this online because of COVID or you're doing it face to face, you're going to do a role play, two 10 minute role plays. This will be where you are faced with a prisoner who has got some concerns or a gripe or some kind of problem. And it's going to be quite realistic. You know, my understanding of the prison officer role plays is that they are as realistic as they can be, you know, together with banging chairs and thumping desks and getting really really angry and, and some pretty pretty interesting language so you've got to deal with that and you've got 10 minutes to do so now when you read through this it goes on to tell you you know how are you going to prepare uh, and this is where they start telling little fibs how best to prepare role plays during the assessment treat the role plays exactly as you would a real life situation most importantly remember to be yourself we want to measure your natural responses and not what you think we're looking for. Now, I don't get this kind of advice because treat the role plays exactly as you would a real life situation. Well, dealing with a prisoner in a prison is not a real life situation for you yet. So it's really difficult for you to do that and just be yourself and deal with it naturally because dealing with it naturally, just being yourself, you're not going to demonstrate all that the skills they're looking for. And why wouldn't you prepare? Why wouldn't you practice? Why wouldn't you develop a structured approach that's going to enable you to manage this situation? Because when you're faced with an angry person, when you're faced with someone who's being really demanding and doing lots of pointy finger at you and lots of swearing, it's very easy to get distracted. So when you've got a structured approach that you can follow, then this will give you the confidence to be able to manage the situation. You can still come across as being naturally, so it's natural, so it's not staged. But you have a structure that you can hang your hat on. So I see this kind of advice all the time. And basically it's saying, just be yourself. It's that same old phrase coming up again. Act naturally, just be yourself. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Because it actually tells you what you're going to get assessed against. So let's take a look at what you're going to get assessed against in these two role plays. I'm not going to give you a, a sample um, script, but I'm going to give you a structure that you can approach. So I've, I've seen sample scripts and things like that knocking around. That's when you are going to come across as being staged. Um, that's when you are going to come across as being completely unrealistically someone else. So I don't advocate that by any means, but what I do advocate is having a structured approach. So let's take a look at in depth what they are actually looking for. So the first one is if we take a look at the definitions of behaviours. So there you go. Um, and I'm surprised I don't actually give you a link to this in the blog. Uh, definitions of behaviours, you've got communicating and influencing. Communicate purpose and direction with clarity, integrity and enthusiasm. Well, that's just a lot of buzzwords for me. Um, but here is the important part. Respect the needs, responses and opinions of others. So from that, I can predict that the prisoner is going to have some pretty way out opinions, maybe of you, the prison service or the actual prison itself. Or they're going to have some needs which may be needs that you don't quite understand. 
and that will link into some of the other behaviours that they're looking for. So the next one, managing a quality service. What does it say about that? Uh, deliver service objectives with professional excellent, e excellence, expertise and efficiency. My goodness, who writes this stuff? Um, so again, just a load of cliches, but then the important part, taking account of diverse customer needs. So then that's cropping up again. So you can predict that this prisoner has got some pretty way out demands of you that you're not going to comply with. Because if you could just give them everything on a silver platter that's outside of the organisational parameters, then you're going to fail. You're not going to, you're not going to demonstrate the skills they're looking for. So it's starting to get interesting now. Uh, making effective decisions. Use evidence and knowledge to support accurate expert decisions and advice. Yeah, lovely. Another set of buzzwords for you. Here's the important part. Carefully consider alternative options, implications and the risks of decisions. So to do that, you'd have to explain it. So in the decision making process, you're going to explain to the prisoner the options that you've considered, the implications of those options and the risks of those decisions. So you see where this is going now. This is where you'd be as open as you possibly can. And this is where you do respect the individual prisoner because you are being open in your communication and you're telling them the basis for your decision. Makes sense so far? It's all starting to come together for me now. And the next part is caring. Now, caring, interestingly, is not in the success profile for the civil service behaviours. But if you go to the competency and qualities framework for the prison service, just look over to the side here, uh, pick up my trusty laptop. It talks about, uh, it's in the working with others, competency. So the mixing and matching here. And uh, if you're thinking that's confusing, yes, it is. <laughs> but the, the public sector is famous for this uh, and mixing and matching things and making things as confusing as possible, even for the people who work in the sector. Um, I can guarantee that if you gave these two people actually work in the prison sector and said explain them, they'd really struggle. Um, so under working with others, we've got 2D caring, shows concern for colleagues, prisoners and others, recognising their needs and providing practical support. Again, it's coming out needs, recognising needs, respecting needs. So we can surmise from this that we're going to get a role play where we've got a prisoner who's got some pretty way out needs that they're being very demanding and they are requiring something off you and screaming at you that you need to do X, Y, and Z. And if you don't, I'm going to lock myself in my cell, dirty protest, wherever it may be. Um, and that effing person down the wing hasn't got an effing clue. Uh, and you, actually you, you, I don't think you've got a clue neither. And they're really going to go for you. Now, these are all distractions. These are all distractions. So if we take a look at everything that we've uh, hacked so far, we know we're going to get someone who's got some way out needs. We know we're going to have to make some decisions. Can't just say, I'll go and speak to my supervisor and see what they've got to say. say that's a big fail. So we're going to um, make the decisions ourselves. And whether it's the right decision or the wrong decision doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What they're assessing are your behaviours and how you came to that decision. I always equate this to a bit like um, math tests. So if you've all done a math test at some point at school or college, and there's 20 marks available for the answer, one, one mark at the end is for the correct answer, 19 marks are for you working out. So they want to see you working out here. And one of the ways that we can do this is by adopting a framework which um, is from the police sector, and this is called Kudsa. It's a non-contact conflict management model and it goes like this, that we actually confront the situation and there's a series of lines that we can use there that we can rehearse. We rehearse them so we come across as prepared and natural. And then the understanding part is a really, really important part. How to ask really good probing questions of the individual so we can get as much information about their needs from them as possible. And they're going to say some vague things and they're going to be purposely vague to give you the opportunity to explore them. They're going to put some little hooks in their answers to see if you latch onto that hook and explore it. Because when you do explore it, you'll find out what the real issue is. And you probably have to only dig a couple of layers deep. Uh, the D stands for define and summarise. So we're going to ensure that we've listened carefully to the individual concerned by defining what you understand the issue to be and checking it with them, summarising it back to them, 
And at this point as well, we can also talk about any organisational policy which may determine a course of action. Solutions part, we're going to break that down into three different parts. Enforcement, so there might be something that you've got to do to enforce something and make it really clear to the individual what's going to happen and why and back this up with a rationale. The uh, P stands for prevention. What can we do to prevent this issue, this problem happening again? And advocacy is where you are going to be that caring person. You're going to be an advocate for that prisoner and to be that advocate for the prisoner, to help them meet their needs in the best way you possibly can, you are then going to follow up with the ANR, which is assess and monitoring and the end result, what the desired end result is. Coupled with lots of questions, lots of lovely cathartic questions. So there you go, folks. Um, there's a way forward. So if you want to find out more about how to cut some people, and this would apply to multiple different organisations, so not just the prison sector. If you're a supervisor and you're going for a management position, you may be given a situation where they give you an awkward member of staff. It might not be a role play. They might just describe it in the interview and then ask you, how would you go about dealing with this situation and this individual. And you could use Kudzer. Kudzer is a great framework for managing anything like that. Thousands of my clients previously have utilised Kudzer to succeed in the police role plays, which are quite challenging. And so many more, it's not thousands, but it's, it's certainly hundreds have used this technique to enable them to succeed in mainly interviews. But I know a lot of people have used it in the prison sector as well and have succeeded as a result of it. So if you'd like to find out more about Kudsa, then click the link below. In the link below, you'll find how you can access the Interview Hacker course and also the Facebook group where this is the Facebook group where I put all my guidance videos. And it's where we discuss the way forwards for your individual needs in terms of how you're going to succeed in the job application process for whatever area you're going for. This isn't just public sector, it's private sector, public sector, uh, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. Uh, last week we featured uh, someone who's applying for the US Navy as an officer, which is just awesome, it's great. Um, just uh, the week before, uh, someone who's applying for administration support position, uh, someone who's applying for the probation service, um, someone who's applying as an engineer. We've got people from all sorts of different sectors in the interview hacker group. So I'd love for you to join. You might be thinking, oh, it's going to be really expensive. Listen, when I put this out to the thousands of people I've got in the blue light group, that's my alter ego for the police sector, um, almost 15,000 people in that group now, uh, they were all saying, oh, this should cost about £40 a month, this kind of guidance. Um, I'd quite happily pay £50 a month. Uh-uh, £4.99. So the price of a coffee and a snack, a meal deal from a supermarket, £4.99 a month with no minimum commitment. I mean, don't you just hate those minimum commitments? I hate them. So I'm not going to ask any minimum commitment from you. If you like it, you'll stay. If you don't, you won't. It's as easy as that, isn't it? Simple as that. I think that's as fair as I can possibly get. So I would love for you to come and join us in that group. And I shall see you soon where I'll explain Kudzer to you. Bye-bye for now.